All right. Um, welcome, Ben. Thanks, Hugo. Um, just thought I'd let you all out there know that today we've been filming unsupervised learning in, in Python course with, with, with Ben Wilson. It is now, what time is it? In Berlin, it's 9.30 a.m. In Berlin, where, where Ben lives, uh, it's 9.30 a.m. It's here 2.30, 2 so maybe it's 8.30 there? Maybe it's 8.30. Anyway, we've been filming for, for very many hours. It's 2.30 a.m. Where, where we are in, in Cambridge, the beautiful, beautiful uh, town of Cambridge, Massachusetts. You're sounding tired, Hugo. I'm, I'm tired, I'm, 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 I'm getting sick, but that, that's never stopped me before, oh, and, sorry, it, and, and, and it won't now. Um, but we thought we'd take this opportunity after such a fun day of... Of, of recording um, to have a chat about about the process and uh, about what, what Ben's interested in. So maybe you can start by telling us a bit about yourself, Ben. Sure. Um, yeah, so my name is Ben Wilson. I'm a data scientist and mathematician. I'm in charge of the machine learning at a small company in Berlin called Lateral. We do machine learning with text and user behavior data to make recommendations. Fantastic. Uh, so would you call yourself a data scientist? Sure, sure. And what does that mean to you? <laughs> I promised Ben I wouldn't ask him that question, but yeah. what, what, what is data science? Give us an idea of, of what, what data science is in your mind. Yeah, so data science for me is about extracting insights from data. The distinction I draw is data science is often about extracting insights from data for people, whereas machine learning is often Util like discovering patterns in the data and using that to make automated decisions. But there's massive overlap between the two. Um, I feel there's some confusion between the two terms. But that's how I define the two things, data science and machine learning. Nice. And of course, data science encompasses a lot of things besides machine learning, right? Absolutely, um, yeah. So not only the you know, um, reporting or um, gaining insight from, from your data per se, but all the you know, getting the data into the correct form, data manipulation, all of these early steps as well, right? Where we spend a lot of our time. Most of our time. Hard work. Great. What about the role of statistics? The role of statistics? Wow, super important. I mean, I guess we all need a basic understanding of what we're doing in order to make informed decisions and get things right. Statistics is part of that. Mm, absolutely. Um, Maybe you can tell me a bit about your relationship with Python. Right. Um, I guess when I started getting involved in machine learning, um, Python was the go-to language. Um, we found it really useful for all sorts of things, from uh, doing research in IPython and Jupyter Notebooks to implementation of uh, back-end machine learning systems to serving those machine learning systems via an API to the general public, Python's been a been, Python's been great. Fantastic, um, and so the course we've we've been filming today uh, is unsupervised learning in, in Python. And when you and I started chatting about potential avenues for for working together on a course, there are a variety of options. Um, and I'd like to know why you jumped at unsupervised learning in, in a lot of ways. I love it. Yep, yeah, it's my bread and butter. It's what I've always done. Um, I'm fascinated by the problem of trying to find patterns in data when you haven't got a specific task in mind. Like it's a fundamentally difficult problem, but it's also, there are so many exciting applications and there's a ton of data that you can use for unsupervised learning, whereas data for supervised learning, good data sets can be harder to come by in, in a real world application setting, you know? Um, unsupervised learning is great. I mean, it's fascinating when you you're able to extract from data patterns which you, you weren't even aware existed and sometimes even explain your own behavior, for instance, in an e-commerce system. Yeah, absolutely. So Discover the cluster that you, you're contained in and find the, 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 the product mm. segment that contains all the products you're interested in. And absolutely. Uh, yeah, and we get that every now and then when, you know, I think um, a lot of the recommendation systems online are relatively coarse-grained and kind of you know, they go towards the central tendency and a lot, mm. as opposed to um, representing the spread. But every now and then you do get these recommendations where you're like, whoa, you know, I think Spotify is a, a, a yeah, great example. Yeah, sometimes, yep. They are a great recommender. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, so something I've really enjoyed uh, about working on this course with you is um, all the fascinating examples of 
uh, unsupervised learning with different real world data sets that, that you've come up with and, and, and brought to the table. So maybe you could t tell us a bit about, about that. What, what you're interested most in kind of the plethora of data sets that we, that we see. Mm. Right, well, look, it's a great question. I mean, I guess I've always been, fa like my favorite unsupervised learning algorithm would have to be non-negative matrix factorization. When I saw that for the first time and I saw the examples of its application, um, I knew I was hooked, and I've spent an enormous amount of time understanding how to use techniques like this better and how to find patterns in data. Uh, you know, like the way it can decompose images into like commonly recurrent components, I, I find fascinating. Um, or that example where it decomposes images of faces into a, sort of a police identity kit of eyebrows and noses and ears and so on. It's uh, absolutely. And what about topics in in, in corporate texts? Sure. I mean, that's a uh, that's of massive interest to me personally, and also to uh, my company Lateral, mm. um, where you know we work with with text all the time. Um, so that's great. And for the for the viewers out there, the non-negative matrix factorization chapter is chapter four of of Ben's unsupervised yeah, learning so you've course. Get so the, you know, yeah. it's really go through the gauntlet to. To, to taste all the, all the delicious fruits. There's some goodies along the way. It has to be There are said. a lot of goodies, yeah. absolutely. Um, so this, maybe, please. I was going to say the uh, stock market clustering is a good one. Mm. Um, or the clustering of countries according to their behavior at the Eurovision contest. It's incredible. This year. Um, yeah. That's a nice taste of hierarchical clustering yeah. for, for those of you who, who know that. That's very cool. Um, so maybe you can tell us about, um, we discussed Python, Python briefly. But as a Pythonist, maybe you can tell us about what type of packages you're most interested in, what you use on a, on, on a daily basis. Yeah, sure. Um, oh, they're good questions. Yeah, so I mean, when I'm sort of in a hacker mode in the, um, in the Jupyter Notebook, it's Pandas, NumPy, Scikit-Learn, all the way. Um, I'm not particularly sophisticated in plotting. That's definitely an area in which I could improve. I feel, but there's great packages out there for that, of course. There are some great data camp courses. Great as, data as well camp courses, which I should yeah. probably sign up for. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think I gave you a subscription, actually. You did, you yeah, did yeah. in fact. Yeah. Um, I should, I will yeah. <laughs> improve my knowledge of plotting. Fantastic. Um, and then there's a whole bunch of Python packages we use for ingesting and wrangling data. Um, so they're like this scrapey. Love scrapey. Um, beautiful soup for pulling apart uh, XML and HTML. Yep. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a whole ecosystem of, of stuff out there. Yeah, Python's great. Like this, yeah. almost anything you turn your hand to, someone's had a crack at it before and there's a library out there to, yep. that gives you at least a, a starting point, if not like a fully fledged implementation. Absolutely. So an, an old friend of mine, um, who actually, I mentioned you a number of times, Justin Boyce, who created our statistical thinking in, in Python courses. <clears throat> Someone asked him once, what do you like about Python? And, and his response was, um, well, it's a Swiss army knife. Mm. Uh, that's what I like about it. Um, it won't always be the very best tool you can use for a specific problem, but throw a problem at me and I can probably do it with Python. Yep, yep. And I think the thing that makes Python particular in the data science and machine learning ecosystem is the community, right? I mean, there are all these, there are a whole bunch of languages that can do all the stuff that Python can do, and, and but they're not as useful for machine learning or data science because, because we all use Python, you know? Mm. There are people out there writing open source software that can do anything you can think of, and um, a, a huge amount of it's in Python. It's the go-to option. Absolutely. This has been a great conversation. I've got one, one final question for you. Before you go to bed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah before I wake up. <laughs> um, so a lot of our audience are, are budding data scientists who really are very interested um, in, in improving their skills, their hacking skills, their data science skills. I was just wondering for beginners if you had any, any advice. Ah, oh, yeah, sure, okay. The first thing I'd say is, and DataCamp is really good for this, you want to mix learning with doing. Like data science, it's not a spectator sport. You've got to get in there, you get your hands dirty. Um, take the data sets from the videos, take the data sets from the exercises, play around them with them yourself and try and construct some data sets of your own. Um, 
And the second thing I'd suggest is don't hesitate to go and get a job as soon as you can. Data scientists are in huge demand. There's so many great problems that you can help solve with real world data. And there's no better way to be encouraged and feel useful than to get out there and try and solve these problems. That's, that'd be my suggestion. That sounds like great advice to me. Get busy. Yeah, yeah, I like it. So if you could distill it down to two words. Oh, two words. Get busy. Get busy, yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Real pleasure, Ben. Thanks, Hugo. Yeah, cheers.